And I came from a family, I, I said the Collins family, that brought witchcraft to the United States. They were originally Druids in Scotland. Their name was Colleen. And they had to flee to Scotland because of being hunted for witchcraft. And they came down to England and pretended to be a Puritan family. One thing I want to point out over and over today is that there are many just as communists trained KGB agents to come to the United States and infiltrate into political and religious circles, so does the occult world. They have a whole training center, two of them in fact, one in St. Louis and one in St. Paul, that completely trains a witch in how to act and talk like a Christian. And they usually do it better than we do, because they're pretending and we're stumbling. So, just going to point this out as we go today. But they went down and they pretended to be Puritans and they came overseas. In fact, they brought the first, first Puritans to the United States on board the ship that Francis Collins owned. They landed at an area called Collins Bay outside of Salem. And it's, in fact, that's why it's called Collins Bay. Now, many of you, how many of you, excuse me, Remember a show called Dark Shadows, okay? You can guess who that was about. When I was a teenager, I was asked to, at all expense paid, fly out to Hollywood with the diary that I had inherited as a child through a will from my great-grandmother. And they were the diaries of several members of the Collins family. One of them was a character named France Williams Collins, which was the secretary in a coven that Benjamin Franklin was a high priest of. And the diary dealt great heavily with three political figures, Jefferson, Franklin, and Hamilton. You can call them by name in the diary and so on. And this is the man that they copied the character Barnabas Collins from in the show. And uh, I was out there for a few months during my summer vacation one year telling all about the Collins family as they were putting the scripts together. That was a very interesting thing that happened to the show. It had the highest ratings of any show that's ever been on television, and it was literally prayed off the television. It still had the high ratings when they quit, when for no understandable reason they just quit producing the show. And it's, they still haven't figured out why they've done it. In fact, they've tried to bring it back several times and repeats across the country and every time it's arose as repeats Christians have started praying and it's only lasted two or three weeks and went off the television again. So if it happens to come up in this area you might decide praying a little. It was a very, very strong occult show probably besides Bewitched was the main reason that the occult grew as strong as it grew so quickly other than rock music. Now I was raised, born and raised in this family, which automatically placed me into a witchcraft atmosphere. Many of you have known nothing but Christianity. Many of you have came out of the world or are Christians, and many of you are still in the world, which I hope you'll get out of today after hearing this. But I was born into a witchcraft family, and as I was telling some of the teenagers different places, when the kids were coming to Sunday school and memorizing memory verses, I was memorizing the witches' chant. When they were reading stories of Moses, Moses and Joseph and so on, and the disciples and the Gospels, I was reading J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. When they were studying different things and uh, they were learning the Lord's, uh, about the Lord's Supper, I was learning how flying saucers about the first men to the earth. When they were learning about the garden and Adam and Eve, I was learning about Adam and Eve being the sons of God. So it was a little different. And of course, when they were learning how to pray, I was learning how to light candles and incense and cast spells. And I grew up in this atmosphere. Many of the kids had something I never had that I never missed until I became a Christian and realized it really existed. Now I miss it. I never had a childhood. In witchcraft, the parents are not allowed, and even if they could, they wouldn't have the ability to, they're not allowed to love their children. 
The children are the property of the craft and not of the parents. They are raised by all the witches in the craft, and the parents say nothing. One thing you might be interested to notice, they're never allowed to spank their children. They're never allowed to punish them. From the moment the child is five years old, he's considered an adult, and he's treated like an adult. And therefore, you have some very rebellious children. But that's the way they like it. Now, when I was 13, I was taken to a thing called the outer court. And the outer court is a school, like you might send your child to a specific coast Bible college. Only each coven has their own Bible college, it's called the outer court. And there I was trained to be a priest in witchcraft. And at 14, I was initiated a priest. Now, if that seems young for you, you can imagine at 13 or 14, you picture your own child, and that's the way it was. I have a little bit of news for you. My sister progressed even faster than I did. When she was 13, she was the witch queen of the state of Ohio. She had over close to about 15,000 witches under her direct control, and all of them were almost adults. So age has nothing to do with it. It was how fast they were trained and the family they came from. In fact, they're after teenagers. The 95% of the people who join witchcraft are inducted by their school teachers in junior high and high school. So if you're sitting out there and you don't, in the past, you didn't ask me to say this, this is just a firm belief of mine. If you don't have them in a Christian school, I suggest you get them in a Christian school. Real quick. My wife's not here today because tomorrow is the opening day of our rehabilitation center, something we've prayed for five and a half years to have, and she moved all night till about four or five this morning. Some of the people from the church I just called, and they had just now, were going to have to miss Sunday school because they were so sleepy, they've been up for over 24 hours moving and getting the center ready, so it'll be ready tomorrow. But her testimony is that two people started her in witchcraft, her pastor and her drama teacher in junior high school. So uh, that will give you kind of a idea of what the occult is like. She was inducted when she was a freshman in school. She wasn't born into a family. But when I was raised, you had to be a witch to be in witchcraft. And then it started changing because they wanted the numbers. Now, at 18, I was initiated a high priest. When I was 14 and initiated a priest, that made me draft exempt from military service because all of the Brotherhoods of Witchcraft and the Satanic Brotherhood of America, which is the Satanist Church, are federal recognized churches. It might interest you to know that some of your tax money pays for a chaplain in every federal prison in the United States, a chaplain of the Witchcraft Church. They have an altar and a service every Sunday for all the witches in the federal prison. And your taxes paid for the chaplain and all the instruments that he uses during the service. Nice to know, huh? But, uh, in fact, they got started at Folsom and San Quentin were the first two prisons to do it. And Folsom's a state prison, so some of your state taxes are going to it, too. That was Jerry Brown's idea. You might consider that when you vote for him next time. Now, you know, they're not publishing that on the television commercial when they say all he's done, have they? Anyway... At 18, I was initiated to high priest, but at 19, I decided that the military needed us. They needed witchcraft. Whether they knew it or not, we were there, the answer to the world's problems. So, I decided that I was going to enlist, and I rode around the country to all the other...